Feathergale Spire and the Fallen Lady During the long walk from the shallow graves to Feathergale Spire, Lady Helfie tries to recall knowledge of the place that sounds so familiar. Her nobility had afforded her many advantages, one of which was to attend parties held by key houses of Waterdeep. She remembered one of these being Moroska's, specifically remembering a young tearaway called Thurl Moroska, with whom she had flirted occasionally. Thurl had been one of those irritating men who were good at everything they turned their hand to. Finding nothing a challenge, young Thurl became an adrenaline junkie, starting the Feathergale Society, a group of high-flying hotshots who used winged steeds to attempt dangerous aerial stunts or just cruise around the countryside. Healthy had heard that Thurl had withdrawn to the country and concluded that Feathergale Spire, as it was named, is where he might possibly be. She prepared herself for meeting him again after so many years. After ringing the bell at the drawbridge of the spire, Lady Healthy decides to announce her presence as a visitor from Waterdeep, hoping to attract the attention of Thurl Moroska, if he is indeed present. From your position, you are able to spot two giant vultures perched on the top of the tower, flanking a figure who withdraws after Healthy announces herself. Shortly afterwards, you are hailed from the other side of the drawbridge. Healthy, is that you? Are you from Riverguard? What's with the crab? After a short discussion and reassurance that you are not from Riverguard, wherever that is, the voice says that you may be admitted, but the crab must stay. Mueza is not happy about this and decides to stay outside with Edward, the name he has given his crab. The drawbridge is lowered and you are indeed greeted by Thurl Moroska. He invites you in and, as you enter, you see that the tower is occupied by other men and women who watch you warily. Some wear a feathered effect scale mail and are well armed, but most are plainly dressed in a white robe with feathers around the collar. You suddenly realise this matches one of the dead bodies found at the shallow graves, and this is confirmed when you spot the same cultish symbol on the chest of the robe. It is at this moment you realise that you have seen it before. On the sigil in the Lord of Lance Rock's cave, alongside the one representing the cult of Black Earth. What does this one represent? Air? And the others? You wonder if some elemental contest is afoot in the Sumber Hills and wonder further what Moroska's part is in it. Thurl leads you into the tower's inner garden, a reflective area where some of the robed figures train. Amongst them is a larger and more disciplined fellow who appears to be practicing strenuous activities with minimal intake of breath. Whilst this is going on, Thurl engages you in conversation, learning that you are indeed not part of the Riverguard water worshippers, but that you have been on the trail of strange happenings in the Sumber Hills and troubles in Red Larch. Satisfied that you do not seem a danger to him and his society, he invites you to stay for dinner and shelter. Mueza decides a decent meal and a warm bed is more attractive than curling up to his crab's hard shell in the wintry Sumber Hills, and so he joins the rest of you. Dinner is a fine array of food, as Thurl has ensured he has attracted the best cooks from Ward Deep to be part of his crew. As the wine flows and tongues are loosened, Thurl tries to explore the subject of air worship with Healthy, who indulges his enthusiasm with flirtatious talk, encouraging Thurl to let down his guard. Whilst this is going on, Leilun releases her owl familiar from a window to scout the area and gain insight into how many folk are in and around the tower. This reveals not too many people, but there is still more than the ideal if things turn ugly. The hours pass and Thurn and Healthy are getting on like a house on fire. The large cultist that was seen earlier is never far from Thurl's side and stays alert throughout. After too much wine, Thurl announces they should all rest but that in the morning he will take Lady Healthy out for a hippogriff ride across the sighing valley before bidding you all farewell. 
He then shows you to your rooms and the night passes uneventfully. In the morning, Thurl is good on his word. After a hearty breakfast, he takes his leave with healthy and they both set off into the chilly skyscape, darting in and out of the clouds in a giddiness that is reminiscent of adolescence. As the rest of you are finishing your breakfast and the hippogriffs are lost to sight through the windows, you are suddenly attacked by the growing number of attendants that had been bringing food to the table. Fortunately, you suspected such an action and are quick to drop a number of foes before squaring up to the large cultist and a couple of Feathergale knights who are clearly Thurl's elite troops. It's a tough fight, but you win the combat in the end and hear the sounds of numerous cultists running in fear from the tower, which you quickly secure. However, you now fret over the safety of your noble friend, Lady Healthy, and what dastardly plan Thurl has for her. In the meantime, Lady Healthy lands in the valley with Thurl, as he shows her a special rock to rest upon. He invites her to sit there while he retrieves something from the hippogriffs, but what he retrieves is a loud blowing horn, which encourages his hippogriffs to take off as he launches himself back onto one, yelling, Enjoy being lunch, healthy! Hardly any time passes before an arrow clatters against the rock healthy sits upon. Shocked, she is about to move to cover when another one goes straight into her shoulder. In trouble, Healthy clambers behind the rock, spotting three ugly knolls gaining ground on her and circling the rock so that she is flanked. Healthy puts up a strong resistance, but she is no match for the knoll pack lord, who seems desperate to eat the woman from the inside out. After what seems to be a final hurrah, Healthy goes down under the blows of his mean glaive, and her last image is that of the shadows of her patron's angels as they come to claim her soul. Thank you for listening to the progress of my Dungeons and Dragons group as they make their way through the Princess of the Apocalypse campaign setting. Watch out for further episodes where we shall learn the fate of Lady Healthy as she falls into the arms of her angels.